This week, Maine became the second state to remove former President Trump from the primary ballot under the Constitution's insurrection clause. The official making that decision to disqualify Trump was Secretary of State Shenna Bellows. And Secretary of State Bellows joins us live now tonight. I know you and your staff have been the target of multiple threats. We appreciate you coming on the show tonight. Shenna, first, can you help explain how this decision was come to? Thank you so much for having me. The, and this, it's more for your viewers to understand how Maine law works. Um, under Maine law, there's a specific process. Once I qualify a candidate for a ballot, any registered Maine voter may challenge that qualification. That's exactly what happened in this situation. Uh, Mr. Trump submitted his signatures, and then five registered Maine voters, including two former Republican state senators, uh, challenged his qualifications. Under Maine law, I was required to hold an administrative hearing where both sides represented by attorneys could present exhibits, testimony, witnesses. And then I was required to issue a ruling in accordance with Maine election law and to uphold my oath to the Constitution. You know, Trump campaign spokesman Stephen Chung made a statement. Uh, he called you a virulent leftist and hyperpartisan Biden supporting Democrat. Uh, he made that statement to the New York Post. What is your response to that? My sole obligation and responsibility in this matter is to the Constitution and to the record put forward at the hearing. And I swore an oath to uphold the Constitution, and that is what I have done. My political affiliation and my personal views of the events of January 6, 2021, played no role in my decision. What has been the reaction? What specifically has been the fallout for you and your staff in the last few days? So today, I, I shared with family and friends, and, and I'm sharing this now because I think it's really important. Uh, we have received um, hundreds of threatening communications. And then last night, my home was swatted. Now, my husband and I are away for the New Year's holiday. Uh, we weren't home, fortunately. But this is a dangerous practice. As you know, it evokes a strong law enforcement response. They were perfect. They responded absolutely uh, appropriately, contacted me. I cannot thank them enough. But swatting is unacceptable. Threatening communications to the people who work for me, to my family, uh, is unacceptable. The dangerous rhetoric needs to stop. We need to de-escalate and understand that you can agree to disagree and debate important issues without resorting to attacks and violence. When, when this decision was made, did you ever imagine that your children, uh, their safety might be at risk? So my husband and I don't have children, but what I didn't imagine is that people in my extended family might be targeted and that my staff would have to endure uh, all day yesterday, ugly, angry, profane, and sometimes threatening communications. And that is just wrong. So I'm urging everyone, it's New Year's weekend. We all make resolutions. As a nation, let us resolve to restore our commitment to civility and respect to an understanding that you can agree to disagree without violence or threats, and that we have due process and the law. In my decision, for example, I delayed the effect of my decision pending an appeal to the Superior Court because that is the appropriate venue for Mr. Trump to advance his concerns and protest my ruling. And that is the process. It goes from Superior Court to the Maine Supreme Judicial Court and to the U.S. Supreme Court should the parties appeal. That is the process under the law in our nation. So this New Year's Day, let's every American commit to civility and respect. And let's bring an end to the violent rhetoric, to the dehumanization of one's opponents and to the threats that lead to what happened uh, at my home last night and what could happen if this doesn't stop. I appreciate you describing the swatting incident. Uh, can you describe what specific threats, what is the nature of, of what people are saying? So I'd, I'd rather not go into the details. I think that's really important for my security. What I wanna say to everyone watching tonight, you may not agree with my decision. And I have to say, I've been so incredibly moved 
by people who've reached out to me, friends of mine from the other side of the aisle and from you know all walks of life who might say, look, I don't know if I agree with your decision, but you're my friend or I have respect for you. Or some of my Trump supporting friends and family saying, I disagree with your decision, but I love you. Mm -hmm. What can I do to support you? How can I help you? Do you need to come to my home? So people have been extraordinarily good and, and that gives me hope. Yeah. Um, I, what what concerns me is that in the court of public debate, the rhetoric uh, against me, targeting me, um, has led to this point of dehumanization and threatening communications that impact not only me, but those around me. Jenna, I hear you. And with the time we have left, Donald Trump's opponents in the 2024 race have come out against his removal from the Maine and Colorado ballots. Um, just last hour, Vivek Ramaswamy spoke with News Nation. Let's actually take a quick listen to that together. I think that it was deeply unconstitutional and wrong for one individual, a secretary of state, without any trial or procedure or anything else, just to decide and wake up one day Donald Trump's not on the ballot. That's wrong. Just as I think it's wrong for a cabal of judges in Colorado in a partisan fashion to do the same thing. He is calling on fellow candidates Haley, DeSantis, and Christie to also remove their names uh, from Maine's primary ballot. What is your reaction to his comments tonight? So, Mr. Ramaswamy has made an error of fact. There was, in fact, a hearing under the Administrative Procedure Act in Maine. Additionally, I stayed my decision pending appeal to the courts because that's Maine's process. And Article 1 of the United States Constitution delegates the power and the authority to the states to regulate their ballots. That's why in New Hampshire, for example, Mr. Joseph Biden will not be on the Democratic presidential primary ballot, but more than a dozen other candidates will. And on the Republican side, there are more than a dozen Republican candidates in that primary. In Maine, although Mr. Brown Swami qualified, Mr. Chris Christie did not meet the qualifications based on signatures. And Maine law explicitly directs me, it is my obligation to ensure that every candidate seeking access to the ballot meets the qualifications of the office they seek. The list of qualifications in the Constitution is not a menu. Those are requirements that the Maine legislature has directed me to enforce under Maine statute. So I think that process is really important for people to understand. I'm not the final arbiter. This now goes to the courts. It was my duty, my obligation under Maine election law and the Constitution to move this forward as I was required to do, and that is what I have done. Okay, Secretary of State Shanna Bellows, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.